Hello wonderful people, we are back. I am sorry that I missed uploading last week. My laptop died quite dramatically, to be fair. I mean, it had lasted me for like eight and a half years, so I can't be too mad, but it totally died. But we're back, I have shiny new toy, and I'm very much enjoying it, although that decided to nearly not work, but we're fine, we're dealing with it, technology, it's, it's all fine. So what this kind of like little break has given me though is a little bit of a chance to think about what I'd like to film in the future and all of that kind of stuff. So I've got quite a lot planned, which is fun. But as always, if there is anything that you particularly wanna hear about, then let me know. And if you think that you will like this, please subscribe, please like the video, please interact in some way that isn't just me putting out videos and then there's complete silence because that's really fun, really fun. And maybe you won't like this, but you know, if you don't then I don't care, I don't care. I do care, I care a lot. Subscribe, which I, subscribe. Anyway, so today I just wanted to chat through a little bit of like how to deal with being nervous, performance anxiety. Some of this stuff is absolutely just directed at performing in front of an audience. I'm coming from the musical side of that. But please don't click off this if you're like, oh, I'm not a musician, this doesn't apply to me, because I really, really believe that, that all of this can be applied to pretty much every walk of your life. So keep watching and let's dive in. I was at a conference a couple of years ago and it wasn't a musical conference at all, it was to do with the church that we go to. But the lady that was um, giving a talk one day brought up this point that our bodies do not know the difference between nerves and excitement. Our body just takes it all as adrenaline and how we perceive those physical reactions makes the difference between whether you go, oh, this is something that's really terrifying or if it's something that you're really excited about. And that really, really struck home with me because I was like, I love what I, I love what I do. I, I love performing, I love playing music, I love it all, it's just incredible. So why wouldn't I be excited about that? Why would I be nervous about doing the thing that I love? And that for me was a real turning point. Didn't happen overnight, that's for sure. It took a little bit of a while for me to really understand how to gain control of that adrenaline. But now, I, ha I can honestly hand on heart say that I don't really suffer with nerves. I suffer with an excess of adrenaline sometimes, and sometimes you have to kind of run around your warm up room a little bit to kind of get it all out. But I do not suffer with nerves, as I would call them, when it comes to performing. A lot of people, when they're performing, will sort of tell themselves to relax and just like chill out a little bit, which is fine, and if that works for you, carry on, don't mind me. However, what that kind of does is it tells us that this adrenaline that we're feeling is a bad thing, and I don't believe that's true. That adrenaline is going to be there anyway, so use it, channel it in a positive direction, rather than taking it and going, oh, I'm getting, oh, I'm getting nervous, I'm getting nervous. No, you're not getting nervous. What you're getting is an adrenaline hit. What you then do with it, your choice. When it comes to what to eat before a performance, I will say a little disclaimer, I am in no way a registered nutritionist or dietitian. Those are really hard words to say. So <laughs> this obviously is just my own personal experience and things that I have kind of gleaned from chatting to other people and things people have said and I've read about. But yes, not an official nutritionist, but I personally find this kind of stuff helpful. I'm sure you've heard this one before, but just cutting down on caffeine and sugar just before a performance can be really, really helpful, particularly if your adrenaline presents itself in getting shaky. So for string players, this is a very widespread problem of we get both bow shakes, particularly because if you're extending your arm out, your muscle is taut and then it just starts like shaking and then people stare at their hand and be like, ah! And caffeine and sugar is only gonna make that worse. So if you suffer from the shakes, maybe try not having an espresso before you walk on stage. It's 
probably not going to help you. Something that I've really started to change is how much I eat <laughs> before a concert. I think I started kind of working this out when I was at college and my parents only live about an hour away. So they used to come over for most of the concerts we did, which was wonderful. But they would then take me out for a meal beforehand. So that was really, really great. But what I used to do is sort of order something quite heavy a lot of the time because I'd be like, I need the energy to get me through this performance, which is true. However, this is something which I've kind of changed a little bit recently. Now, before a performance, I will absolutely have some food because you also do not want to be starving on stage because that's just a bit miserable. But I will not go for something too heavy. So I'm talking kind of, I probably won't go for something really, really heavy in carbs and all that kind of stuff because it just kind of sits in your stomach and makes you feel quite heavy. So I'll have that after. I will absolutely always eat after. Make sure if you're having a small meal before performance that you really refuel after. It's really, really important. You've just worked really hard. I prefer to do it that way around. So I'll have my big meal late. And it can be quite late at night, but that's okay. These things happen. Such is life. And then stay hydrated. I know you're so sick of everybody saying this, but I used to be really bad at drinking water. And then I got a reusable bottle that I really, really like. It's really easy to have on stage with me and I can just have like a sip of it during rehearsals. Stay hydrated. If you get dehydrated, number one, I mean, I get headaches really badly, so I'm never gonna be at my best if I've got an absolute clangy headache. But it just helps, it helps your muscles, it helps your brain, it helps your focus, it helps everything. So stay hydrated makes a massive, massive difference. And you'll find you're able to concentrate further into that performance as well and you won't get that kind of halfway through the symphony oh, I don't really care about this anymore quite so much that may still happen some symphonies are terrible but never mind I think a really really important one is focusing on the positives of what you're about to do look out in the audience find some friendly faces maybe there's some people there that you know kind of focus on them look at your audience see those people that have you know, paid good money to come and watch you and be like, yeah, they have paid money to come see me. They wanted to do that. This is a positive thing. They're on your side. Nobody wants you to play really badly, mess up in whatever capacity that looks like. If you're giving a presentation for it not to work, for you to forget your words, whatever it might be. Nobody actually wants you to do that. It's really awkward when that happens and we're all way too British to enjoy that. So know that that audience, they're on your side. They want you to do well and take a lot of confidence from that because if they didn't want to see you, they wouldn't be there. If you're playing in a group or an orchestra, focus on the people around you. Focus on the fact that you're all in this together. You all want it to go well and nobody is sitting there hoping that you play badly. That just, it doesn't make any sense. They're shooting their, themselves in the foot by doing that. So focus on blending your sound, focus on your friends around you, and that can be really, really helpful in just kind of getting you out of any focus on yourself. Positive visualization is another thing which people talk about a lot, and this is actually the thing that I probably find the hardest. It's something I'm really, really trying to work on because I've got good imagination, but I really struggle to imagine myself doing things really well. <laughs> and it's not because I'm, really negative on myself it's just something that i find really really hard so it's something that i am actively practicing is thinking through a piece in my head before i go to play it a lot of people absolutely swear by this technique it's something that's really really common in athletes a lot of the top top athletes will say that they visualize a race before you know when they wake up that morning or they're having their breakfast they're running that race in their head over and over and over again so therefore when they come to the actual event they've already done it hundreds of times so they know that all they have to do is to do that it it sort of sounds kind of hokey but it really really makes such a big difference so this is something that i'm really working on i'm not there with it yet but hopefully one day i will be <laughs>
also the language we use around ourselves is like really really important so using positive language rather than really negative language so one that I actually um I came across and I can't remember the blog it was on but one of the things that um, one of the lines they used was nail the high note rather than don't miss the high note. You can see the difference that that can make so quickly because if you say don't miss the high note that means that there's a possibility that you're going to miss that high note and you need to have every confidence in yourself that that is just not going to happen. You're going to nail it because why wouldn't you? But to be honest nothing beats practice. I'm sorry I know that's the last thing you want to hear right now but nothing can beat good preparation, nothing can really be knowing that you've done everything in your power to prepare yourself for that scary moment, whatever it may be. If you're confident in the work that you've done beforehand, then you are far, far less likely to be crippled by nerves. You're far more likely to be able to put that positive spin on it, remind yourself of why you're there and to get excited about what you're doing rather than spinning into like a really negative mindset. Remember, adrenaline is your body putting you into fight or flight mode. So just do everything that you can in order to help it fight and not make you wanna run away. Because running off stage is probably gonna be awkward. So I hope that was useful. I tried to keep it a little bit more to the point because I ramble. I, everyone knows I ramble. I'm a verbal processor. That's why I wanted to make these videos so I could verbally process all these thoughts that run around my brain. So thank you for indulging me. Like I said, like and subscribe if you would like to see more of this. I just think that all of these things like nerves and imposter syndrome and all the rest of it are just something that we just need to get talking about. We all experience them. So why are we trying to pretend that we're these tin men walking around who don't get affected by any of it? It just makes absolutely no sense to me. So I really, really hope that this has given you the confidence to tackle that thing that previously you were really nervous about, but maybe maybe just now you can switch those nerves around and be like nah i'm excited let's let's do this so yeah i will see you guys in the next one thank you so so much for watching and yeah see you later